What is going on guys? Jerry Neutron here back with a brand new video and it is time to update our de facto standard gaming PC build. Since Cabby Lake's come out, we've got new processors, new motherboards. So for you guys that are looking to build a new PC, I put together some parts lists for you guys here. I'm starting from the bottom, going all the way to the top and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what you can build for your money. Let's actually just go ahead and jump right into the build. All right, so starting with the CPU, we are going with the uh, Intel Core i5 7600K. This is a four core, four thread processor, 3.8 gigahertz clock speed, 4.2 gigahertz uh, turbo clock. This CPU is gonna be good enough for 90% of games out there. Um, you know, it still holds true that the i5 is the best, is the best value per dollar. Um, there are some games out there that will take advantage of a more powerful CPU like the uh, Core i7 7700K, but for the most part, this CPU is going to get you there for 90% of the games out there. So we're going with this. It's 235 bucks right now over at B&H. Not a bad deal. Yeah. Also, it is unlocked. This is a K-SKU processor, so of course you will be able to uh, overclock the 7600K. So for that reason, we are including an aftermarket cooler in here. Nothing too crazy, but we're going with the uh, CryoRig H7. This is basically a uh, Hyper 212 Evo uh, equivalent, if you will, but just a tiny hint better and better looking, in my opinion. It's uh, 35 bucks right now, and uh, yeah, it won't get you, you know, those extreme max overclocks, but you'll be able to do a little bit of something with it. And also, it's not very tall, so you'll be able to install it in most cases, which is nice. All right, and for the motherboard, we're going with MSI's uh, Z270 SLI Plus. Now, this is probably one of the best uh, budget, how should I say this? It's not a budget motherboard, but it's one of the best values per dollar on the uh, Z270 platform that I found. There are specific criteria that I was looking for when it came to selecting a motherboard. Um, so let's just go down some of the features that this particular one has. So the main reasons that I did pick this motherboard is for one, it's got four four pin uh, system fan headers. So that way you have plenty of fans to control in your build. The motherboard also has two M.2 slots. Really not something that we'll worry about when it comes to gaming, but that may be something that uh, you want to have just for future expansion in case you want to pick up uh, an M.2 SSD. You also have USB 3.1 Gen 2, two of the slots there, uh, one of them being USB-C. And then you also have your uh, run-of-the-mill USB 3.1. The only thing I don't like about the rear I.O. here is there is no optical audio, which for me would be kind of a big deal because that's where my uh, USB da or my DAC plugs into. Other than that, it does support SLI and Crossfire. And uh, I did read that you can also get pretty good overclocking out of this board as well. Um, you know, that does matter this time around, just like with Skylake. So you do have to be conscious of that if you are planning to overclock. But uh, you should get pretty good overclocks out of this board considering its price. Not top tier level, but good enough. All right, and then for the RAM, we're going with this Patriot Viper 4 uh, 16 gigabyte kit. Now this time we are upgrading from uh, to 16 gigabytes of RAM from 8 gigabytes. More than likely you'll still be fine with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but there are a few new games that are coming out that are uh, listing more than 8 gigabytes as their recommended spec. Um, just some that I can think of off the top of my head. Battlefield 1 wants like 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, Forza recommends 12 gigabytes of RAM. So there are some games out there that do want more than eight gigabytes of RAM nowadays. More than likely you'll be fine, but if you have the money, I would just go ahead and grab a, a 16 gigabyte kit. So we've got this one from Patriot here. It is uh, running at 2800 megahertz. So nice overclock there that you should be able to enable with an XMP profile. And then for storage, we've got this uh, Toshiba SSD. This is the uh, Tryon 150. This is a 480 gigabyte SSD. Now, if you need additional storage for like storing games and stuff like that, we've got a Seagate Barracuda drive. This is a two terabyte drive for 70 bucks. Uh, again, you'll just use this for, you know, storing gameplay footage, storing your game, screenshots, 
all that other uh, miscellaneous crap. Now there is one thing that does worry me about these cheap drives is generally they don't have a super long warranty. I think this one only has like a two year warranty. So just keep that in mind, but uh, yeah. All right, and then for the graphics card, we're going with the uh, Asus Strix GTX 1070. This is the non-overclocked card, by the way, not the overclocked one that I reviewed. Uh, this you can get for 420 bucks, a, a little bit less if you participate in, um, you know, the little rebate stuff. But this is a nice card. It's got a, a pretty plain color scheme or neutral color scheme as well so that you can you know, apply whatever little RGB lights that you want to apply to the card to match your color scheme. So that's nice. It's got a nice back plate as well. It's a pretty good card and should give us uh, the performance to uh, get some 1440p 60 hertz gaming uh, down. So that is why I have chosen that particular card. Now we're gonna power all of this with the uh, EVGA Supernova 650G2. Um, this thing is in like every single one of my builds. Um, right now it's just got a really good price to performance. So that's why it uh, keeps popping up here. Now EVGA did recently release a G3 version of this from which I understand is actually supposed to be just a little bit better than this one, which is already good. So you may wanna check that out and see what the prices are on that versus the G2 and just get whatever one's cheaper. But this one right now is 90 bucks. And as always, spend good money on your power supply. That way it does not kill your whole damn system. Same with the motherboard. All right, now we're stuffing all of this into the Fantex Enthu Pro M. This is the tempered glass edition, which is new. I decided to go tempered glass here since that is kind of all of the uh, rage these days. So we're keeping up with the trends. We're going with the tempered glass version. I do believe this case also shares an internal chassis with the uh, Enthu Evolve. So if you, you know, like that case, but maybe it's too much money, you can get this. It's slightly cheaper and uh, it'll just have a different exterior, of course, because this one's not aluminum. But uh, you get the tempered glass case there. Pretty good internal layout, pretty decent looks. I can dig it. I think it'd make good for a uh, good enthusiast build. So yeah, all of that comes out to uh, just around 1300 bucks, which is pretty good for building a 1440p uh, gaming machine. Got a good amount of storage, good powerful graphics card, nice power supply, case. You pretty much got it all here in terms of an enthusiast build. Once you start creeping up beyond this price range, um, you know, you kind of start seeing diminishing returns for the price. So I think this is a good price point. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this PC build down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, on to the next video. Until next time, guys, see ya.